He is known for being a political activist and Islamic ideologist. He is recognized for his role in founding Islamic modernism. His name is Jamal al-Din al-Afghani. In the late 19th century, amidst the rising tensions between the Muslim world and Western powers, a figure emerged who would become a champion of Islamic modernism and a fierce advocate for pan-Islamic unity. Sayyid Jamal al-Din al-Afghani, also known as al-Afghani, embarked on a journey that would shape his destiny and leave an indelible mark on history. Born as Sayyid Jamal ad-Din Asadabadi, al-Afghani was a political activist and Islamic ideologist. His travels took him across the Muslim world, where he witnessed the encroachment of Western powers and the erosion of Muslim unity. With a keen understanding of the challenges facing his people, al-Afghani became a vocal advocate for pan-Islamic unity in India, particularly against the British Empire. Al-Afghani's philosophy was rooted in the belief that minor differences in Islamic jurisprudence should not overshadow the urgent need for a united response to Western pressure. His teachings resonated with many, and he played a pivotal role in the movement for Islamic modernism. His ideas challenged traditional norms and sought to reconcile Islamic principles with the changing world. However, al-Afghani's activism did not stop at words alone. He was known for his involvement in a plot to assassinate Shah Nazar al-Din, whom he believed was making excessive concessions to foreign powers, especially the British Empire. This act of resistance demonstrated his unwavering commitment to protecting the interests of the Muslim world. Today, al-Afghani's legacy as a founding figure of Islamic modernism and a staunch advocate for pan-Islamic unity continues to inspire generations. His teachings remind us of the importance of unity in the face of adversity and the need to navigate the complexities of the modern world while staying true to our values. Sayyid Jamal al-Din al-Afghani, the protagonist in this tale, forever remains a symbol of resistance and a beacon of hope for those striving for a better future. Jamal al-Din al-Afghani, a prominent thinker of the 19th century, was a man of mysterious origins. While he claimed to be of Afghan descent, there are conflicting theories about his true national and sectarian background. Some believe he was born in Asadabad, near Kabul, Afghanistan, while others argue that he was actually born and raised in a Shia family in Asadabad, near Hamadan, Iran. Regardless of his true origins, al-Afghani's ideas and philosophy were deeply influenced by his upbringing and education. He received his early education at home and later went on to study in Kazvin, Tehran, and the Shia shrine cities in present-day Iraq. It is believed that he was influenced by the teachings of Shia revivalist Sheikh Ahmad Asai during this time. Throughout his life, al-Afghani adopted various names and pseudonyms, such as al-Kabuli Asadabadi, sadat e Kunar, and Hussein. In his writings published in Afghanistan, he even used the pseudonym Arumi. These multiple identities and names reflect his complex persona and the challenges he faced in navigating different religious and political landscapes. One of his main rivals, a sheikh named Abu al-Huda, sought to expose al-Afghani's Shia roots and called him Mutafkin. This rivalry highlights the religious tensions and power struggles of the time, as al-Afghani tried to gain influence among Sunni Muslims or escape oppression by the Iranian ruler Nur Uddin Shah, al-Afghani's philosophy and ideas were shaped by these experiences and the diverse influences he encountered. While his true beliefs remain a subject of debate, it is clear that he utilized takia and ketman, practices more prevalent in the Iranian Shiite world, in order to navigate the complex religious and political landscape of his time. Jamal al-Din al-Afghani, a prominent political activist and philosopher, dedicated his life to fighting against colonialism and advocating for pan-Islamic causes. Born in Afghanistan, al-Afghani traveled extensively, studying religions and gaining knowledge about different cultures. However, it was his encounters with Freemasonry that played a significant role in shaping his political activism. In his pursuit of political reform, al-Afghani saw Freemasonry as a means to organize and advance his anti-colonial and anti-imperialist agenda. He used the Masonic Lodge as a platform to rally like-minded individuals and promote his pan-Islamic ideals. However, his hopes for a united front against colonial powers were dashed when he encountered the indifference and political subservience of the Masons to the British Empire. Around 1875 to 1876, al-Afghani had a pivotal moment when the Masons lavishly praised a British imperial visitor. This incident highlighted to him the extent of the Masons' allegiance to the British Empire, leading him to realize that the Lodge was not the political platform he had envisioned. Disillusioned by their indifference, al-Afghani made the difficult decision to leave Freemasonry behind, recognizing that his political goals could not be achieved within its confines. Leaving Freemasonry did not deter al-Afghani from continuing his political activism. He went on to publish an Arabic newspaper, al Urwa al wuthka in Paris in 1884, alongside his devoted disciple Muhammad Abdul. 
The newspaper, whose title translates to, The Strongest Bond, called for a return to the original principles and values of Islam. Through his writings and speeches, Al-Afghani aimed to inspire his fellow Muslims and ignite a sense of unity and resistance against colonial powers. Al-Afghani's philosophy and political activism continue to resonate today, offering valuable lessons for dealing with challenges in our daily lives. His unwavering dedication to standing up against oppression and his insistence on the importance of unity and self-determination serve as reminders of the power of grassroots movements and collective action. Al-Afghani's story reminds us that even in the face of indifference and adversity, it is crucial to stay true to our convictions and strive for a more just and equitable world. Jamal al-Din al-Afghani, a prominent figure in the late 19th century, was known for his unique blend of traditional religious beliefs and a modern critique of Western imperialism. His philosophy aimed at strengthening Islam through the adoption of Western sciences and institutions. Al-Afghani believed that Muslims could become politically unified while maintaining their faith based on religious social morality. One of his main struggles in life was to decrease British domination over Eastern nations and minimize its power over Muslims. He saw the need to overthrow individual rulers who were subservient to foreigners and replace them with strong and patriotic leaders. Al-Afghani believed that Hindus and Muslims should work together to overthrow British rule in India, emphasizing the importance of unity against colonial powers. Al-Afghani's ideology had a profound impact on his followers, including Muhammad Abdul. He argued that Islam and its revealed law were compatible with rationality, and Muslims could embrace modern advancements while still adhering to their faith. This idea resonated with Abdul, who further developed the concept of using rationality in human relations within Islam. In addition, Al-Afghani's philosophy extended to his views on the evolution of life. He accepted the validity of evolution and believed that the Islamic world had already known and used it. However, he rejected the theory that humans evolved, emphasizing the presence of souls in humans. Al-Afghani's teachings and beliefs continue to hold relevance today. His emphasis on unity, social morality, and the compatibility of Islam with rationality can guide us in dealing with the challenges of our daily lives. By embracing diversity, working together to overcome oppression, and finding harmony between faith and reason, we can strive for a more inclusive and just society. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.